Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Daily Devotionals. I know there for a couple of months we were taking a break. Uh, we had the holiday season uh, over which we traveled, and so we didn't have uh, Daily Devotionals then. And then we had I had oral surgery, and then I got COVID for a couple of weeks. And so uh, there was a couple of weeks there where, or a couple of months there where we didn't have uh, Daily Devotionals. But we are back, and I appreciate everybody joining us for our, uh, for, for, brief messages every weekday except for Wednesday to kind of just guide our minds a little bit to kind of put our our thoughts into perspective uh, I'm gonna try to to keep them relatively consistent uh, try to do a better job of that in terms of length I know for some some topics that we've covered uh, I would speak for or we would talk for maybe 30 minutes or so and then some of them would be like maybe five to ten minutes so I'm gonna to try to be a little bit more consistent in terms of that and if, if I think it's gonna be longer longer discussion or a longer topic I'll try to give you a warning ahead of time that this may be a little bit of a longer longer point but anyway having said all of that we are entering into a phase and as of February 22nd uh, which was Ash Wednesday for a lot of people in the religious world who observe Ash Wednesday and Lent. Uh, of course, our sermon yesterday for our, our brethren at our congregation was on Lent and the Bible, uh, which of course is not found in the Bible. But there are certainly, especially leading up to Easter and even to a certain extent a little bit even after Easter, there are what are referred to as holy days uh, in the religious world in terms of of what people observe and practice. And I just want to mention, and like I said, this is going to be a brief, brief daily devotional. But here in 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter, he addresses these brethren. He says, To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. And of course, that, that phrase, a like precious faith with us. Uh, that like precious faith that guides us to heaven through his word grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of god and jesus and of jesus our lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust Given the fact that we're, I'm sure, being having discussions or maybe hearing a little bit about some of these religious, quote-unquote, holidays, these observations that people are making regarding the, again, the Lent, the Lentil sacrifice, or Lenten sacrifice, I mean, not Lentil, the Lenten sacrifice, the kind of leading up to the Holy Week prior to Easter and then kind of building up to Easter and so forth, the way in which in particular this season i guess you could say this religious season that people kind of put a lot of stock into it kind of has this holy element to it and people tend to become a lot more spiritual a lot more religious around spring of course easter and certainly around christmas time because of people believing that that's the birth of Jesus or celebration of the birth of Jesus. But notice that Peter tells us that God's divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Within the scriptures, we have no reference to the observation of Lent. In fact, there's a Catholic historian back in the 360s AD after the Council of Laodicea, which kind of codified the necessity for Christians, Catholics primarily, uh, at that time because they didn't, they persecuted anyone who had any different ideas or beliefs or anything else. So, uh, but there was a, a Catholic historian who recorded the fact that in the New Testament and in the first century church, the observation of these days in this period of time of Lent, of Ash Wednesday, certainly Ash Wednesday didn't even come up to the Middle Ages, actually. Uh, this is the first time it's referenced is in the 900s AD. But there was no observation of those 40 days. <clears throat> and and that was that was pointed out, even though it was then put into effect as a necessity. In fact, I think it was St. Augustine of Hippo 
who said that at any other time of the year, our fasting is voluntary. But at this time of the year, during the 40 days, fasting is mandatory. It's required. It's a necessity, he said. So the fact that man is seeking to institute traditions and elements of what he thinks is holy compared to what Peter says, which is that God has given us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. Godliness being the desire to please God. And there's a lot of people, a lot of religions, a lot of organizations that seek to define how they want to please God, which is kind of self-contradictory. The idea of pleasing God has to be according to how he says he wants things to be done. I don't get to say, well, God, this is how I'm going to please you. Because in the end, that means it's not about God. It's about myself. And it's about pleasing myself. And it's about making myself feel holier. It's about myself feeling godlier. And it really has nothing to do with God at all. And Peter tells us that God's divine power has given us everything we need. Contained within the scriptures, we have commands from God, from Jesus, from the apostles. We have approved examples of the New Testament church and what they did, what they taught, what they didn't do or didn't teach. We have necessary inferences. And in none of those areas of the authority of the scriptures do we find even a suggestion of the observation of Lent, of Ash Wednesday, of the observation of Christmas as the birth of Jesus or the observation of Easter as the Lord's resurrection. Keep in mind, of course, as we talked about yesterday, all of the elements that are sought or at least uh, that are promoted among these many religions with the observation of Lent and the observation of Easter, all of those characteristics, all of those thought processes, they've already been addressed in Scripture. God has already addressed how he wants things done. Jesus has already addressed how he wants to be remembered, how he wants his death to be remembered. In fact, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me regarding the Lord's Supper. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11 that as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, the cup we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Not just once a year. That's every Lord's Day. But... And as we talked about yesterday in our lesson, but for those who maybe weren't there or maybe are, are watching who aren't members of our congregation, in Colossians chapter 2, there are some warnings from Paul that he offers the brethren that I think are very applicable in this particular discussion. Paul says in verse 8, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. Remember Jesus, he several on several occasions quoted Isaiah and referenced the fact that, you know, you have your traditions, yet and, and you claim to seek to worship me and get you're offering me lip service. You're offering God lip service. And you're teaching his doctrines as as commandments, the traditions of men. And yet that's not what God wants. So verse 8, when Paul says, beware, you need to be on guard, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit. Well, how is it that, that brethren could be cheated? How could they be convinced by man's philosophy and empty deceit to follow traditions of men? Well, Paul kind of goes on to explain that here in verse 20. Uh, he says, starting in verse 20, therefore... If you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Well, what type of regulations? Well, for example, do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Certainly, are there, are there commandments of God? Are there restrictions? for Christians in terms of what God commands about touching or not touching, tasting, not tasting, handling. Yes, there are. But Paul's specifically addressing according to what man says, not what God has bound. And I think it's really interesting that at the Lenten season, the Lenten sacrifices, people give up certain vices, people give up certain luxuries, people 
fast in some way. And certainly there's other elements to it. There's almsgiving and prayer, preparation for Easter, things like that. And yet, all of these things are according to the commandments and doctrines of men. It's not found in the New Testament. And the go-to statement or the go-to phrase is, but there's, it's holy. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's a righteous thing. It's a godly thing to do. Well, what was it that Peter said? He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. There is no need, first of all, for man to come up with his own methods. But in addition to that, remember what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, the warning about all these religious, spiritually minded people who are going to say to Jesus, Lord, Lord, look at all the things that we did for you, verse 22. Look at all the things we did in your name. But Jesus says, you didn't do what I told you to do. You did what you wanted to do. You did what you defined as a good work. Yet, those who don't practice the law, those who don't practice what I've authorized, you are, he calls them, you who practice lawlessness. That's why Jesus says earlier, back up in verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Well, if the will of the Father has been revealed to us, and what God wants from us, what Jesus wants from us, has been revealed. All things that pertain to life and godliness has been delivered to us. Well, then, I don't get to just come along and say, well, but I think this would be good. Well, the Lord never said not to do this. Well, I've, I've, we've mentioned this before, we've talked about this before, but in Leviticus chapter 10, Nadab and Abihu made that mistake. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took a censer, put fire on it, put incense on it, offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. Notice, and, and when scripture, when people break the commandment of the Lord, when they transgress the law, that's clear. This is a unique phrase. They did that which he had not commanded them. They didn't break a commandment of God. They didn't, it's not like God said, this is what I want you to do, and then they did specifically broke that commandment. No, it sounds like they added something to it. That which God had not said. They, that he didn't command. And I can imagine Adab and Abihu might have said, well, God never said not to. But verse 2, fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And notice what God told Moses to tell Aaron regarding why he killed two of his sons. He says, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. Nadab and Abihu, and certainly there were other issues with Nadab and Abihu and their character, but this specifically, the fact that they were seeking to offer something before the Lord, and they added something to it that God said nothing about. By doing so, they did not regard God as holy. They did not glorify him among the people by obeying what he told them to do and keeping it exclusive and limited to what God told them to do. And I just think that all of this has such application for people we talk to, people, friends, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, people who maybe uh, this was what uh, a week and a half ago, uh, February 22nd, which was Ash Wednesday, people who may have come to work or come to school or whatnot with with the the ashes on their forehead I, I there's a lot of people who are sincere in their belief that they're trying to do what's right and that they think they're doing what's right because they're being told by priests and and churches that this is what you're supposed to do and yet we don't need to be focusing on what man says. What we need to be focusing is what God says. All right, that's the daily devotional for you today. Just something for us to think about, especially given the time of year that it is and the fact that a lot of people, this is on their minds right now regarding Lent and so forth. So maybe this will be something that we can utilize to bring up to others to kind of help them think about a little bit about God's word. All right, everybody, that's the daily devotional today. Lord willing, our next devotional will be tomorrow. I'm glad we're getting back into the, to the swing of things here. So I hope to see you all then. Thank you, everybody.